Hi everybody! If you watched the Harshad Mehta series and you were genuinely fascinated by the idea of the stock market, then this episode is for you. Because the story that I'm about to tell you today is the story of one of the most iconic business wars in the history of the Bombay Stock Exchange. The story that I'm about to tell you today is one of the many iconic tales that defined Dhirubhai Ambani sir as one of the greatest businessmen of his generation. This is a story that dates back to the 1980s, wherein the Indian stock market was at a very very primitive stage. And if you watch the scam of 1992 series, you would know that the share prices don't just depend on the profit, reputation and functioning of the company, but also on the constant battle that keeps happening between the bears and the bulls. For those who don't know about these terminologies, here's a very very simple explanation of the same. There are two kinds of players in the stock market. The first kind of player is the bull and the second is the bear. The bull is the optimistic investor, which means what? He will invest in companies which he believes will grow in the future and his profit is based on the growth of the company. For example, if tomorrow an investor like Harshad Mehta comes into the market and he spots ThinkSchool and he believes that ThinkSchool is a legendary company, he will make an investment of 1000 shares in ThinkSchool. So if suppose ThinkSchool today is trading at only 100 rupees per share, a person like Harshad Mehta, who is a bull, will make an investment of 1 lakh rupees. Five years down the line, when Think School becomes India's top educational company and the stock trades at 500 rupees per share, and that is when the value of the same 1000 shares for which the bull invested 1 lakh rupees will now be worth 5 lakh rupees. And the 4 lakh rupees of delta is where the profit of the bull lies. So if you see closely, the profit of the bull is associated with the profit of the company. On the other hand, the bear is a pessimistic investor, which means what? His profit is kind of based on the losses caused to the company. A very simple example of the same is Manu Mundra in the Harshad Mehta series. Now just to understand this concept very very easily, let's try to imagine what will happen to the stock exchange if the legendary investor Warren Buffet starts behaving like a bear. Now people, if you know about Warren Buffet properly, you will know that he actually went on record to state that he will never ever sell Coca-Cola shares. In fact, he endorses Coca-Cola shares in every way possible. And this is the reason why even small scale investors have a lot of faith in Coca-Cola because the legend himself has put his money over there. So regardless of all the speculations in the market that Coca-Cola is selling sugared water, which is contributing to the obesity epidemic, investors have still kept their money with Coca-Cola. Why? Because they have faith in Warren Buffet and his business acumen. But just imagine this scenario that tomorrow you wake up and you see a news headline which states that Warren Buffet has started selling Coca-Cola shares. Can you imagine what's going to happen? There's going to be a complete panic in the market and everybody, the small and the big investors will start selling Coca-Cola shares. So if Warren Buffet sold 1000 Coca-Cola shares at 4000 rupees per share, the moment the news comes out, Twitter is going to go crazy, the market is going to be in complete panic and the stock price will start dropping down. Now the question is, what exactly is the reason behind this madness that Warren Buffet starts selling and the market goes crazy? Well, that is because there will be a speculation in the market that if Warren Buffet has started selling Coca-Cola shares, which means what? He has lost faith in the company. Why has he lost faith in the company? That is because something terrible might have happened with Coca-Cola because of which he must have understood that Coca-Cola share price is going to go down. So only because of this mere speculation, everybody will start selling. And the moment everybody starts selling, there is going to be a free fall of Coca-Cola shares. And the share price of Coca-Cola might come down from 4,000 rupees all the way down to just 2,000 rupees. And here's where there'll be a twist. If Warren Buffet would have been a bear, he will buy all the 1,000 shares that he sold at 4,000 rupees back again at just 2,000 rupees. So if you see, if Warren Buffet sells 1000 Coke shares at 4000 rupees and buys those 1000 shares back at 2000 rupees, his net transaction in terms of shares would be zero, but his profit would be 20 lakh rupees. And this is how, if Warren Buffet had been a bear, he would use Coca-Cola to make a hefty profit, which thankfully he isn't. Now let us come back to the 1980s Bombay Stock Exchange. People back then the stock exchange worked very differently as compared to today. Back then we did not have all of these digital systems as a result of which trade happened pretty slowly as compared to 2020. 
Now the way the system worked was every broker had a 14 day settlement period and today this time period is only 2 days. So back then if you bought or sold a share you would have 14 days of time period to either pay the money for the shares that you bought or to produce the shares that you sold. And just in case you're not able to make the payment for the shares that you bought or if you're not able to produce the shares that you sold then you will have to pay a charge called the badla charge. Now what is a badla charge? It is something very similar to the minimum payment that you pay for the credit cards wherein you pay some amount of money to buy another 14 days of time to be able to settle your transaction. So in between this 14 day settlement period no one would really ask you for any money. And the bear cartels used this 14 day time period to full advantage. to attack the reliance shares over here they used a technique called short selling now what is short selling short selling is a technique that is used by investors wherein the investor sells the stock that he does not own to create panic in the market and because of this panic in the market the stock prices will start falling down just like the case of warren buffet and coca cola So once the stock hits the rock bottom rate these people who sold the shares will again buy back those exact shares eventually making zero transaction in terms of the shares but will end up making a hefty profit So in April 1982 the bear cartels in the Bombay Stock Exchange decided to collectively attack Reliance shares and they decided to bring down the price of Reliance to a rock bottom rate wherein they could buy eventually make a hefty profit Now this attack was so bad that within a very short span of time 3.5 lakh reliance shares hit the market and the impact of this attack was so huge that it led to a domino effect wherein even the shares of blue chip companies like Tisco and Century began to fall down by as high as 10% and in total the bear gang ended up selling 11 lakh reliance shares in 1982 worth 16 crore rupees and remember hum ek aise time ki baat kar rahe hain jahan pe even the senior most executive of a world class company had a salary of only 1000 rupees per month in india and the bears were super confident about this attack that they will be able to collapse the reliance shares because they believed after all ek kapda bechne wala 10th pass vyapari hamara kya bigad lega and their plan was to bring down the share prices of reliance to such a large extent that no investor would have ever seen before eventually it might cause massive losses to reliance but will give them a hefty profit and initially their plan worked out so well that the stock price of reliance fell rapidly from 131 rupees all the way up to 121 rupees and this is when there was a massive massive panic in the market and everybody thought that reliance is going to collapse under the attack of the bears but this is when there was a slight twist in the tail and the stock price of reliance suddenly stopped falling in fact after some time the stock price of reliance started going up from 121 rupees to 125 rupees and in the next 14 days as the bears kept on selling kept on selling kept on selling there was a mysterious organization which kept on buying kept on buying and kept on buying and everybody was surprised because technically managements in india cannot buy their own shares so bears were selling everybody knew that but who the hell was buying and that is where the master stroke of dhirubhai amani sir comes into play as it turns out the organization that was buying all the shares that the bears were selling was named as friends of reliance association and this was like a brand new organization which entered the stock market and prevented the stock price of reliance from dropping and that is how the plan of the bears failed miserably because at the end of the 14 day settlement period they couldn't afford to buy back the shares of reliance ye kya ho raha hai idhar hum itna time paisa sab kuch laga ke aate ekdam inhone waqt badal diya jazbaat badal diye zindagi badal di so now since the bears did not own the shares they had to ask for another 14 day period in order to settle the transaction and this is where they had to pay the badla charge that dhirubhai ambani demanded and that is when dhirubhai ambani sir attacked the bear gang by putting a hefty badla charge of 50 rupees per share and again this was unaffordable by the bear gang eventually they entered a deadlock and the entire bombay stock exchange was shut down for 3 days in order to resolve this conflict and guess what when the market opened it opened specially to trade reliance shares so that the bears could buy back the shares and complete the transaction and legend has it that because everybody had heard about the master stroke of dhirubhai ambani sir the share price of reliance shot up by 50 rupees and eventually the bears had to run for their money borrow it from others just to complete their transaction and reliance was back on track in no time 
and that is how in april 1982 india knew dhirubhai ambani sir as not just a yarn seller as not just a 10th pass vyapari but an icon of the stock market or as they say the masiha of the bombay stock exchange and when all of this drama was done many many reporters went to dhirubhai ambani sir and asked him why did he take so much risk to fight against the bear cartels and how did he exactly anticipate this attack and legend has it that he responded by saying that for these bear cartels and for these stock brokers now reliance shares might just be bags of money but for the common man of india it represents his bundle of dreams because today a middle class father might have invested every single penny that he has saved into reliance shares just so that he could pay for his daughter's education today a father might be working very hard day in and day out just so that he could have his entire savings invested in reliance shares so that tomorrow he could pay for his daughter's dream wedding today some hard working couple in some corner of mumbai living in a very small apartment might be putting in their blood and sweat to collect every penny just so that they could invest in reliance shares and eventually lead a happy retired life so all of this is a representation of trust that these people have in me and my company that we will be able to give them the fortune to help them fulfill their dreams and this trust is more valuable to me than any amount of money and therefore this and many other golden attributes put together turned dhirubhai hirachand ambani into one of the greatest businessmen india has ever seen so now the question is what do we have to learn from this iconic case study lesson number 1 while good companies focus on building fortune for themselves and themselves alone great companies focus on building fortune for the common man number 2 Every time risk comes at your doorstep you have two choices either to treat it as a threat and to react hastily or to treat it as an opportunity and use it to fuel your growth and you know what people if you read through the stories of the most legendary people of all time like Jeff Bezos like Shivaji Rajay like Indira Nooray you will see that many of their extraordinary achievements have come during a time when risk was at their doorstep and somehow these legendary people had the ability to turn risk into an opportunity eventually to fuel their growth and last and most importantly people the most valuable asset that you can possess in the world of business is the trust of the common man if you know how to cultivate it you will be able to build an empire that will change the world forever because at the end of the day people always remember one thing empathy and compassion for the common man are two of the most powerful currencies in the world of business which have the power to turn a common man into a king In our case it gave rise to the greatest businessman of India whose name was Dhirubhai Hirachand Ambani thank you